Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Before we introduce this week's guest, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a great way to support everything Cool Tools does, including our newsletters, podcast, video channel, and our flagship review website. This week, we want to give a hearty shout out to Maury Estabrooks, Ed O'Brien, and Shiraz Shirwani. To become a patron of Cool Tools, visit patreon.com slash cool tools. Our guest this week is Tiffany Schlein. Tiffany is an Emmy-nominated filmmaker, founder of the Webby Awards, and the author of the national best-selling book 24-6, The Power of Unplugging One Day a Week, which was the winner of the Marshall McLuhan Outstanding Book Award. This year, the Museum of Modern Art in New York premiered her one-woman show, Dear Human. She's won over 80 awards for her film and other work and has been writing weekly newsletters, giving online talks, working on a film for the election, and is hosting a hashtag Zoom Holla Bake with special guests. And it has been way too long. I don't think we've ever had Tiffany on the show before. She's a long time friend. So it's so great to have you. How are you, Tiffany? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I, I always love reviewing your cool tools. So it's a uh... It's a great pleasure to finally have this conversation. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I'm so delighted you're joining us and can't wait to hear your four favorite tools. Yes, it was a really interesting thing to just think of what a tool is. Um, and Okay, <laughs> but should I just like... Watch in. To, What's your first well, one? Did, okay. Well, my first one, just for all the techies in the house, is, uh, and then I'll go analog later, Um is my AI scheduling bot named Clara. And she's completely changed my life. And she schedules, you know, around 300 plus meetings. <laughs> and I, she's amazing. And, you know, she is, uh, I loop her in on an email. Oh, let's, Clara will help set up a time. And uh, if she ever gets confused, she has a human assistant. So Ken, my AI professor husband, will say she's human in the <laughs> loop. He never lets me. I'm like, she's an AI bot. He's like, yeah, but she's got a human assistant. So, but I have to tell you, I used to have a full-time person on my team that would just schedule meetings for me and figure out time zones. And no one should be doing that if they don't have to. They should be doing something more with their brain. So when we got Clara, it's just been a game changer for me to immediately loop in via email someone that has access to my calendar, can have a program, figure out time zones, and just and always says the best things. I mean, people, I can't tell you how many times people are like, you have the best assistant, Clara. And then I feel like I'm breaking their heart when I'm like, she's a bot. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me. Tiffany, when we were scheduling, it happened to you. It's yeah, just, I'm like, that's, oh, that's Clara's really mean. cool. <laughs> so, so, so t t Tiffany, how does it work, and and what what are you, um, what what kind of access do you have to give? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Kind of, what kind of oversight do you actually have to do? How much does it cost? So, give us some particulars because this yeah. is amazing. It's and amazing. It's a life changer. I, I like to hear, like, you know, uh, if if I want to sign up to get it, what do I have to do, and wh yeah. what can I expect? So it's it's made by Clara Labs. And if you pay a little bit more money, you can change your last name. But mine's Clara Parker. <laughs> and, uh, um, and you give access to your calendar. And this is actually such a good question, Kevin, because at the beginning, I didn't put enough parameters. And I remember the first month I started using her, she was like working me to the bone. I never had a break. <laughs> I couldn't go to the bathroom. I didn't have time to eat. And I was like, oh, my God. I have to have schedule in breaks and lunch. <laughs> and then, um, and now I've kind of got it down because, you know, I think everyone on knows when they like to have meetings and when they feel creative and don't want to have meetings. So I, I don't really have that many slots. And um, in the morning when I feel really creative, like I know I, that's not my time for meetings. And um, so you, you give her access to your Google calendar. I my Google, yeah. My Google calendar. Google calendar. And then I, you, you would, Maybe as you said, suggest you might give preferences to certain times of day or have other days that you are going to actually. Yeah, block you really off. are giving blocks. So I have like uh -huh. three three hour blocks a week. 
And um, they're all scheduled for 20 minutes. Like someone that I know needs to be a much longer call. She wrote to me, she wrote an email saying, I'm really hoping we can get more than 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. That's just the standard setting. So it's, I automatically set them for 20, but you can do kind of code words to intonate that you want to do longer. And now they've added Zoom, which is really great. So you'll say, you know, Clara will send you times for either a call or if you want to do a Zoom with them, you can say that. So you're giving them access and I, I just give a 20 minute, I think everything can get done in 20 minutes or less. And, and as, just to be clear, um, if you're scheduling, this is scheduling you and one of the person is, is one-to-one or is it is the bot able to schedule multiple people and do kind of a doodle thing where it's going to select out of all the people's yes. available slots? They- I have done lots of people in many different time zones. And a lot of times I work with people in different time zones. So that to me is like what, like I'm always doing, I used to be doing kind of math to figure out when to call. And now it's just like out of my brain and she's computing that. And, and it's not, it doesn't look like a doodle pull. It really looks like you're communicating with the human because she has programmed the best answers for everything. (laughs) She's so polite and charming and tells you to have a nice weekend and people think she's human. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she totally passed the Turing test with me, Tiffany. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and the um, the natural language understanding that it's doing or, or responding is is it running off of GTP three uh, or an AI or is it, uh... it is an AI, but she does have an assistant, Brenda, <laughs> so that will help her if she gets confused. And I will tell you, a couple times a year, there's I call it the Clara loop, and it gets in. You know, it'll get. It only happens literally two or three times a year, which with a human, it would happen that, or if not a lot more. So there's and describe some... what, what, what the Clara loop is. What, okay. What, what I'll is tell that? you when I know that I've wanted a call set. So every Monday I get an update. These were your successfully scheduled calls. And these are the ones still being processed. And I always look at the ones still being coordinated because like, why is it taking so long? Sometimes I jump back in. That's what I'll say. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Cause I ask her, <laughs> to take me off the emails once I first introduce her. Now, some other people that use Clara don't, they're always on there, but I've had such a good success rate that I really don't want to be on the email anymore. I'm like, Clara will find a time for us to speak and then I'm off of it. But every Monday, if I think something's taking too long, I will jump in and try to figure out what's happening. Yeah. Interesting. And, and what's, what's a common thing holding, holding um, that back when, when you do jump in, is there any kind of a pattern to what, what, what causes confusion? Yeah. When, you know, cause I told you, especially when I'm working on a movie or working on a book, I, I don't have very many meeting times and sometimes it'll just get scheduled so far out. And I'm like, Whoa, no, that's not going to work. We have to talk in the next month. So <laughs> that's really my fault because I do a lot. I try to really put constraints over my meeting times, but other times, you know, if there's two email threads, she's gotten confused, but I, you, you, she's training me on how to talk to her really. Cause I'm trying to be very clear, please schedule a call in the next week with Mark and Kelly. Like the more you put in that initial email, the more you're directing her programming to make it happen. And, and, and that's how you would communicate with her as well is, is you yeah. are also communicating via email and you, and she has her own address or what? <laughs> she has her own email address. I always right. imagine okay. what she looks like, but, <laughs> uh-huh. and I've grown attached to her. Like I do say, <laughs> thank you so much, Clara. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking to, but it's, she's so good and she's so efficient and she's so on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how and how much does she cost? Well, you know, I, it's interesting when you ask that because I know that I was given a deal because I got it early in beta when they were really figuring things out. So I would just write to Clara Labs and find out and tell them that Tiffany sent you. <laughs> I actually looked. It starts for the Clara Essential Package is $99 a month. Interesting. Okay. And then the Pro is 200 and then the Executive is four hundred dollars a month, which uh, that must be like. A super they say the number month. of me. Well, it's it's all based on the number of meetings. So ah, there were, okay. So it, like if during a busy period when I'm in production on a movie or doing one of my global things, I have a lot. But then that's interesting because I wonder if they. Um, I should probably relook at what <laughs> that phrasing, but yeah, I think it's all based on your your meetings per month. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, and, and you'd have to compare that to actually hiring an assistant. A human oh my assistant. gosh! But think about that—an um, assistant with benefits, healthcare. You know, 
and just a lot of time. Like I'm, I, I always, you know, in all my conversations with Ken, who makes robots and AI, it's all about what can they reduce that doesn't need human power, and what can humans do that that robots and machines can't. I mean, that's the big question. So, 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 just again to clarify, the the main um, means of communication, both coming and going with Clara, is email. So Only it's really email. email. Right. Um, There's no Slack or other. Um, no, it's or, only email. It's only email, yeah. no phones. And um, you even communicate with her. So her dashboard, so to speak, is your, is email from you. It's all email. So it really does feel like you're speaking to a human. Like even when I go on vacation, don't schedule anything. I'm like, I'm going on vacation. So don't schedule anything this week. It's all like this really nice communication over email. And she's she's got a great way of communicating. <laughs> and and you said that there is Brenda. Brenda is a person, a real person who can come in when needed. And so there are there are people somewhere with at Clara Labs that could help or help you set up or whatever if you needed that. Yeah, and just making sure. I think, and I don't know if they've changed it because again, I was in early, and I know they've been just improving and all the um, different points of it. But I think there are people that are double checking before they confirm. Um, so she's doing the initial thing and then the human in the loop part is that someone confirms that it's right. Um, yeah. So the human in the loop is the term that it's like double checked or if it gets complicated or if it's not like a simple, uh, meeting to set up. So this is a really fabulous, cool tool. I mean, really, it's just, um, fantastic. So, so, so like, um, if you had to, since you're in beta, maybe you've done this already, what, what would you suggest to Clara Labs that they do next? Or what was the next thing you might imagine that they might well, do? Well, I'll tell you what was really great. And then I'll think about that. Well, it, those of you that have kids with like sports schedules, that was one of the best things is I would say, here's the soccer schedule. Here's the basketball schedule. And she would just like put it all in my calendar. And that was such a, a time saver. The thing I would love is, well, <laughs> we don't travel anymore, but when I used to travel a lot for speaking and stuff, I think coordinating travel, um, would be great because that's so much about scheduling and coordination. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that's something that I wish. Like a travel about. agent bot where you kind of say, you know, and they would, they would walk you through all the options and prices and connections and all that. Kind exactly. Of stuff. I mean, she does put, if I back in the pre pandemic, here's my flight, she would put that in. But what would be really great is if she could back into it and it takes you an hour to get to the airport. So she'll put that in and they, arrange for the you know there's just certain things that really seem like they could be done at this point right well fabulous clara okay i gotta check it out thank your you new, your new best friend yeah <laughs> that's cool all, all right so what do you have next on on uh, your list of stuff to talk about okay this is more analog but just as valuable to my day-to-day -day life and it's my five minute journal and um, I am a big journaler as, uh, <laughs> Ken calls me an extreme journaler. So I already like it, but a lot of people don't, but this is the journal for people that don't journal. It's called the five minute journal. And, you know, you mentioned my book and for the last 10 years, we turn off screens one day a week, which has changed our lives. Amazing. But I was looking for something the other six days as like an intervention to not let my phone and the news and email, um, start my day and end my day. So I have this five minute journal. It's got a really nice kind of cloth cover. It feels really good. And on it, you open it up. So in the morning, I use my phone for my alarm clock. It's on airplane mode. And I walk downstairs, I get my coffee and I open up my five minute journal. And it has like interesting quotes at the top, which I sometimes read, but I really normally go right to the three things I'm grateful for. And through all the research I've done on gratitude and how great it is, don't write the same thing. Be very specific as possible and make it always different. And then you'll be appreciating a lot of different things. So I write these, there's three lines, you have three lines to write your grade for. And then it says, what are three things that would make today great? So you have to sit there and instead of being stressed by the latest New York Times headline or getting some stressful email or looking at social media, I think, what is my day? How would I like it to unfold? What do I hope to get done? What connection points do I hope to make? So it's like this really wonderful little moment of thinking about my day. And that's it. I've had my cup of coffee. I haven't looked at my phone. I have set the tone for my day instead of the screens. And it's incredible how much I look forward to it, how it kind of balances me. And, um, and then at the end of the day, I go back to that nice cloth covered book. I open it back up 
And it says, what were three amazing things that happened today? And mind you, there are just three lines for this. This is all on the same page that I wrote on in the morning. And often the three amazing things that happened were nothing that I thought were going to happen. So again, (laughs) wonderful, like extra appreciation of like, oh, look at this. I didn't even expect these three bits of wonderfulness. And then the last line, which I think is very profound each day, it asks, what's one thing you you wish you could have done differently? And so like a moment of reflection, and I am telling you to begin and end my day like that, which I've done, I started doing it during the, after Trump got elected, because I was, I was so stressed out looking at the news, and I really did not want him in my mind that much. So this was like, I need to set and start and end my day myself with myself. And it's been such a thing I look forward to. And I love, I love looking back on it. um, And thinking about you know, even looking back a couple of years ago, I've been doing this particular journal for, you know, four years, but it's a tool. It really is a tool to navigate my mood and time. And, um, it's wonderful. And it's just so, it just looks so nice. It, I, I love the, the, the texture of the, uh, cover and everything just looking at the picture it looks like it would feel good in your hands it feels really good it's got nice paper i do a nice pen with it and uh, it's really a tool and it was interesting when when i was thinking about tools because i part of me was going to talk about the concept of shabbat as a tool um which is the concept of a day of rest and i'm not a religious person but that is a tool to have a complete day of rest um but i didn't instead i chose this because it was tactical so so how many days in a book I, it lasts me usually like five months. So you have two a year. Okay. That's, that's, that, I mean, the way you've just described that makes it so appealing. It's like, I just want to do that. Like, I'm going to do that. Right. It, it, it's like, it's <laughs> so, it seems so sane and civilized. It's so simple. I mean, I remember reading once you had some kind of counter. Yeah. Your- I have, I have my, right. my, um, Days left counter my my death clock and it's how many days I have left. I remember reading that years ago. I was like, yeah, oh, right. I love Kevin. Well, but this is kind of a this is so much about being in the now and appreciating the day, and really setting. I, mean, I don't like the word intention. I don't. Know, I found it sounds too woo woo. But really, kind of setting your day for yourself, and not letting outside forces constantly manipulate your mood, because um, that'll happen later <laughs> after you put it down. <laughs> No, it's re- it's a really great tool, and I like it. And um, uh, as you said, the um, the prompts are all there, and so it's very and it's a single line, so you're not expected, so to speak. No, Your obligation yeah. is very very small. Yeah, it's a really they're simple and yet just just perfect to frame your thoughts and your day. And yeah, well, fantastic. Well, thank you for that one too. Sure. All right. What's the third one? Okay. The third one is, uh, I was really thinking about when I started like this, but it's a black Sharpie and <laughs> I'm a, a filmmaker. A particular, a particular Sharpie or the brand no, Sharpie? It is a brand Sharpie. And sometimes I use the thick, sometimes I use the thin, but it's that very thick, very strong marking of a pen. And here's the thing. I, I'm a filmmaker. And when I studied film, when I was learning filmmaking at NYU, we made films on celluloid and and the only thing that you could that would the ink that would stay on was a sharpie right so mm-hmm. it really was a filmmaker pen but i've just found now that we've all moved to digital um i just love this i love writing in a sharpie and even during my day so i I've, I've put my 5 minute journal away and then i have this big sketch pad and each day even though i have my google calendar and even though i have it on my phone I write out my schedule for the day, just like whatever appointments I might have. And then I list the three to five things I have to get done that day, no matter what. And I write it all in Sharpie. And sometimes it makes me commit to that thing. And it's so big and bold and dark. And I just love it. I love the smell. I love writing with it. I love the way it absorbs on this thick sketch pad. I just, I love a black Sharpie. Wow. I am a huge fan of Sharpies too. Yes. I use them all the time. They're great. I've been using them. Um, and I, I did one for Kevin where I just doodle little uh, characters and aliens and monsters. And I did one on a vase for Kevin. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's so they, much fun. I love Sharpies. Yeah, you can write on anything. I think that's yeah. also really liberating. You just know whatever you write on is going to be good. 
<laughs> well, it's also it's a form of commitment. Like there's no erasing or anything. You're kind of right. there. There is there yeah. is a kind of a, a faith based. You know, you're kind of stepping out because it's, yes. it's there. That's a great way to put it. You are fully committing. There's yeah, a great. little erased button on a sharpie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and and they're inexpensive and um, they last a long time. So um, yeah, um, that's great. Black sharpie. So, um, Tiffany, tell us about your fourth. Uh, okay, my last one's very analog. Um, but my glue gun. I mean, we have in our home. We call it the art closet. But it has all of our things you could create anything with. But I'll tell you that glue gun is used more than anything. I mean, it is used. A glue gun is just can do anything. It can build anything. I mean, in the last week, um, Ken and our daughter Bluma, they glued together like this fairy house for outside our house for the little kids in our neighborhood. I glued a stone to a ring back on. I glued the side of like this wooden thing that wasn't sticking. I don't know. It's just a glue gun is like, you can do anything with the glue gun. So there's several different variations. One is you can get different color glues. I don't know if people yes. know that. Yes. But you, um, black glue for glue gun is really great in making things with insights because you can kind of make it light proof and hide stuff. But let me tell you about a glue gun discovery that has changed my life. Tell me. Cordless glue gun. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you can get a cordless glue gun with an adapter to use whatever kind of cordless drill batteries you have for your tools and that has just like oh my gosh um, <laughs> it goes anywhere <laughs> it goes anywhere and it, it is its own stand too that's the other thing because one of the one of the problems with the glue guns the cheap ones is that they fall over yeah. they drool and they fall over and they drool but the battery thing forms a upright stand for the glue gun so you can put it down and um they heat up pretty fast and that that um, liberation, that agility with the glue gun is just – it just really changes everything. You'll have to tell me which brand that you like because I, I, I would like to upgrade. I mean I have a cordless one, but it just feels a little like – I'd love to know which one you like because I do use that a lot. I'm using a Shorebond. Shorebond. Shorebonder, okay. which was uh, I think recommended on Cool Tools by um, Xander Rose. And um, oh, I, got an, I got an adapter to my DeWalt – batteries because i'm you know you kind of like you have to kind of choose a brand that you yeah. go with your tools and i'm i happen to be dewalt and okay you know, thank you I, i'm gonna tell xander that i because i do need a new glue gun so there you yeah. go thank you but i I'm, I'm with you in terms of um its use for everything we've built popsicle bridges and yes um, yes uh, I'm trying to think of something else I used it for recently. Um, well, I made um, um, these model um, um, houses using glue guns, and um, yeah, yeah, it's um, we made a chicken saurus from chicken bones. <laughs> um, it's not the strongest glue, and it may over time um, um, be it's released. It's more but, down and dirty. Yeah, it's more yeah. a down and dirty repair or building something, but. Right. It's just, there's, it's such a, um, you can get into unusual places and yeah, I'm so glad you brought up the colored glue because that's a great gift to get someone is a glue gun with a big packet of like metallic glue and colored glue. And you can really create a lot of unusual things with that. That's so cool. So, so Tiffany, um, tell us about, uh, the upcoming paperback edition of your book, 24, six, what, what's it about? Well, it's really, I mean, I've known you both since the early days of the web, but it's really a lot of my thoughts about technology and humanity. Like, what is it amplified? What does it amputate? And what were my hopes for it in the early days um, running the Webby Awards and where I think we took a bit of a wrong turn with the business model and how feeling very distracted and addicted and what my family did, just we started doing what we call a tech Shabbat, where we turn off screens one day a week and we're almost on 11 years of doing it. And it's just changed our lives in such a profound way. I mean, I have all my best ideas on Saturday. So we turn off screens from Friday night to Saturday night. And we have a 17-year-old and an 11-year-old. And, um, wow. you know, I feel, feel more productive the next day. It's everybody's favorite day of the week. I mean, our older daughter, you know, she's so stressed right now with college applications. And she she looks forward to it like we do. It's just this 
this complete reset and turning off the outside world and doing all the things we don't do because we're on screen so much. So we cook, we go in nature, we do art, we read, we do nothing, but it's all without screens. And it's, it's literally like, I, I'm about to have a tech Shabbat. So I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. Every week I look forward to it. And then every week I look forward to turning it all back on. Yeah, so yeah. That's so yeah. cool. I love that. Yeah. That, that is, that is the beauty of, of that kind of thing is not, as I say, it's not because the work is bad and poisonous. It's just because it's so good. Yeah. And, it, and taking the break from it renews your yeah, you reappreciate it. it. Yeah, you yeah. reappreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Because during the Saturdays where I'm writing by hand and reading and and you know, if there's things I want to do that might I'm like, oh, I have to wait. And then and I kind of like thinking and pondering things that I can't look up. It works my brain in a different way. And then, you know, on Saturday night, I'm like reappreciating, like, wow, we live in 2020 and the, the web is here. And I you know no one's saying that they're excited about living in 2020 right now. But um, but it's I think it has this dual effect every week where I, I so enjoy being off of it and with my family and with myself. And and then I look forward to being back on. So we've been doing that for so long. And you know, you do hear about so many people feeling burnout and the whole pandemic has accelerated screen use, which is so many benefits, but I think everyone I know is feeling very burnt out. So I'm excited about, it came out last year, uh, last fall, which was really exciting. And then it's going to come out in paperback, which is a whole new audience because it's a lot cheaper version of the book. So I'm excited mm -hmm. for, like so many people write to me how much it's changed their life. They read the book. It's, the book is kind of my own story, thoughts around technology, as well as a personal, you know, thought and and thoughts about tech. Um, and then it also really gets tactical on how we do it. What are the stuff that's come up and, you know, how to talk about this with your partner, your kids and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just really, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to have it go out and get this, this new surge into the world. Do, do you have any hints for like a great way to get started practicing this kind of switching off for a 24 hours? You know, I kind of think just try it. Like people are so scared to do it for some reason, but it it's like this immediate oasis of calm that I can't even really articulate because it's so huge. But I think, I guess the thing I would say if you want to start it, and I really go into detail in the book, but look at your calendar and pick four weeks to do it. Because like any habit or ritual, it's about the repetition of it. Like the reason I had the tagline being the power of un unplugging one day every week is because every week I look forward to this event and every week it, it like, it gives you something to look forward to. It gives a rhythm to the week. And um, so I would say plant in your calendar four weeks in a row. Cause it gets better. The longer you do it, the more you mm -hmm. do it. And it's just like anything to like bake it into your schedule. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and the other thing too is, um, I mean, there's Mark, part part of it is kind of like you know yourself signing a do it, but then you kind of have to kind of explain it to others, yeah, in a certain kind of a sense. And so that kind of um, justification or whatever you want explanation, maybe um, I find that is is more that's more of a hurdle in your own head, really, than rather than other people. That other people are kind of like immediately um, understand in a certain sense or accommodate, yeah. Th that right. your 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 situation or your claim or your 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 habit. So if you just you know tell people I'm not going to respond between these hours, people just don't even blink now. I say sure, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I think I get respect for people when they set that boundary, and I think that people need to know it's okay to set that. We don't have to be on and available to the whole world twenty four seven, and um. You know, this is great ancient wisdom. And again, I'm Jewish, Ken's Jewish. We're not religious, but I do think this idea of a full day of rest is this deep, profound ancient wisdom that we need to bring back for the modern era. And that's what I really try to do in the book is to kind of I go into a lot of the neuroscience and the physiology and the history, because it's a really interesting idea that a true day off is going to have ripple into so many incredible benefits, which there's so much proof of it. And, and we have created a society like I, the day I'm most reflective and I have the best ideas is always on Saturday. And I want to live in a society that values reflection and values a more inward space. And, you know, Friday night's always very social in our home because we always have people over for dinner. But Saturday's got a more inward energy. And I think it's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I really look forward to it each week. Yeah. And that and again, that that I mean, because we we, we practice that in, in our house and the kids growing up and 
you know, our little mantra was, well, this is how our family does it. And it was right. all they need, that was all they needed to know when they were young. <laughs> it was just, this is what we do here. Yeah. And it was perfectly fine. And um, it made a rhythm. There's, there's, it also changes the, the weeks and days into something that has a rhythm rather than just yes. kind of a, a yes. flat, relentless plane or, or, or tide of things coming in. There was now a rhythm, which was really another kind of surprising, unexpected benefit. I love that. Yeah, the rhythm. And so many people during the pandemic are like, oh, I have nothing to look forward to. There's no weekends. And like, we have a weekend every weekend because it's very clear when all the screens go off. It's like this special day. And it really does. I love that. It creates a rhythm to your week and to the way you think and the way you connect. Like I feel most connected with myself and with my family on Saturday by far. Because, you know, we're all during the week, there's school, there's work, there's a mil- we're with a million different people and directions. And it's this one day where we kind of really reset. Yeah, I, I like your idea, Tiffany, of, of trying it for a month. Um, you know, there's so many things you can try for a month. And a month, particularly if you're just doing it weekly, is not very much. But it's enough to give you a sense of its power. Yeah, because I think some people say, oh, I turn off the screens when I go on vacation once a year or a couple. But to me, I mean, that's great. Um, but to me, it's the weekliness is the power. It's the every week I get this and every week I, yeah, it's just, it's the weekliness of it. And so, yeah, those challenges that people do for 30 days, but this is just one day, every seven days, you're going to go off screens and see how it feels. And it's this, you know, I think the exciting part to me is that there's a lot of people that do the Sabbath, but they're very religious and very observant. And it, it's sad to me, and I have total respect if you are, but that this idea is usually reserved just for people that are really religious, when really it's an idea that should be available to everyone wherever you fall, atheist, wherever you are. It's such a great idea, and it really works. And so the name of your book, again, the paperback version is... 24 slash six. Yes. Yes. And it's uh, out in paperback. And, and for those who are trying to figure it out, it means 24 hours, six days a week. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. you're <laughs> on and then 24 hours in one day a week in which you're recharging. Yes. And the tagline, the power of unplugging one day a week. And I think, um, yeah. And I think, I, the title was really to be in contrast to what seems to be the ideal in our world, which is 24 seven, which I don't think is good for anyone personally. <laughs> yeah. So what would be the one we'll have all the links to, to all this stuff that you've been talking about and, and your, all your websites and stuff, but just for listeners who might not have access right now to the show notes, what's the one URL you would recommend where people can find out about all things, Tiffany. Okay. Yeah. Um, just Tiffany Schlein.com. And my last name Perfect. doesn't have a C in it. Um, so just S H L A I N and I have all my films and my books and, you know, all the stuff that I'm doing and, uh, I would love, you know, I've been doing a quarterly newsletter where I've been doing a lot of kind of pandemic updates as well from my brother, who's a doctor. So I'm, I'm very, uh, interested in this chapter that we're in right now in society with the web and it's very interesting times. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> may we live. May we live in interesting times. It's a little maybe, too interesting right now. Yeah, yeah. May may next year be less interesting. <laughs> may next year. That's what my New Year's card is going to be. May let, yeah. next year be less interesting. <laughs> we have to tell you this one thing. Um, Ken and I, uh, last year we went and uh, bought plots of land um, because it's just been on my to do list forever that I. Thought that would be a good thing to do to be near my father and wait, wait, wait. Plots. Oh, you talking about like in the cemetery? Like literally, plots of land in Tennessee Valley. They have this beautiful kind of green, rolling hills where you can get buried, and and there's no headstones. It just looks like hills of wildflowers. Anyways, the only reason I bring that up is that last year we went and picked out the plots and with our kids, and we we were lying there, and Ken and I were laughing that that would be a very funny New Year's card. <laughs> <laughs> be like, Happy New Year! One more oh cycle God. around the Earth, and one step closer to these plots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is so funny. Well, well, I mean, yeah, that's um, your kids will actually thank you for that having relieved them of that choice. 
Yes, yes. Well, I, it's comforting to know that I, I get comforted going there once a year. I don't know. I know that was a weird way to end, but I was just thinking of the New Year's card. That's mostly what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to oh, us before so you switch fun. off for the day. Yeah. And, uh, enjoy enjoy your uh, analog uh, Saturday. I, I, I I've got to give that a try. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I and, enjoy. <laughs> and thank you so much. We really um, were a lot of fun and uh, you had great tools. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you guys for always pointing out the great tools uh, for us to all check out. Thank you so much. It was super fun. Hey, everybody. It's Mark from the Cool Tools podcast. I want to thank you for being a listener to Cool Tools. And I also would like to let you know about our Patreon page. If you would like to support the Cool Tools show, as well as our video channel, the website, and all the newsletters that we do, you can go to patreon.com slash cool tools. That's just one word, cool tools, and pledge any amount you want. You could even pledge a dollar a month. Every little bit helps. We have editors. We pay for transcribing costs. We pay our reviewers. Every bit of money that you contribute goes towards supporting the show. I'd like to give a shout out to our supporters of the Cool Tools podcast. This week, I'd like to thank the following Patreon supporters. Bill Schuler, Bob Kay, Brian Pelly, Carl D. Patterson, Chad Cosby, Chris Wieland, Chris Weirstook, Craig Tooker, Dan O'Brien, Dean Putney, Donnell Cunningham, Evan Barker, Graham Medlin, Hans Riesbeck, Helen Hegedus, Jerry Kearns, Jim Lesko, Jim Spofford, John Pollock, John Burdenbaugh, Keith O., Ken Altman, Les Howard, Lauren Bast, Mock Nerd, Malton Make, Mark Goebel, Matt Gromes, Michael Douglas, Michael Jones, and Michael Pecorini. Thanks to all of you for supporting the Cool Tools Show. We really appreciate it. 